Welcome to Breslau Church. It's exciting to come together and worship the Lord in person. Allow me to read out Hosea chapter 6, verse 3. It says that, let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge him as surely as the sun rises, he will appear. He will come to us like the winter rains, like the spring rains that water the earth. We're so excited to have you here in person and those who are at home. Uh, for those who are able to stand, let's stand and we'll worship the Lord together. He will never fail. He is Almighty God. Greater than all we seek, greater than all we ask. He has done great things. Lifted up to the feet of the grave. Race to life, our God is stable. In His name, we overcome. For the Lord, our God is able. God is with us. It's on our side, He will make a way. Above all we know, above all we hold, He has done great things. Lifted up, defeated the grave, raised to life. Our God is saved. Defeated the grave, raised to life, our God is able. In His name, we overcome. For oh, the Lord, our God is able. Lifted up, to defeat the grave, raised to life. of the blind there's no one like you none like you into the darkness you shine 
And out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Our God is greater Our God is stronger But you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome in power Our God Our God Into the darkness you shine Ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Because you are greater, Lord Our God is greater Our God is stronger That you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome in power Our God Our God Our God our God is greater, our God is stronger, God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. And if our God is for us, and who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand Heavenly Father, we praise your name. Lord, you are our God. You're greater, you're stronger. And Lord, we seek your presence today. Lord, when we are with you, we are, we're at home. When we are with you, we do not have to be afraid. When we are with you, we know that you will provide. We know that you are a healer. When we are with you, we know that you love us. God, today, thanks so much that you are able. Thank you so much. You are who you are. And thank you so much for inviting us into your presence. Thank you so much for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins on the cross so that those who come to you can approach you. Lord, we give thanks that we are your sheep today. You are the great shepherd. We can hear your voice. We can follow you. We know that you are with us. Lord, we lift up this time into your hands. We continue to direct our focus on who you are and on your character. Lord, there's so many things that can distract us. But Lord, there's only one focus in our lives, which is you, you alone. Today, Lord, may your spirit room, may your spirit works in our lives and help us 
to draw close to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Welcome and welcome those who are at home. Uh, we're going to uh, take some time to look at the children's moment today before the announcements. Hello, I have another lesson for you about tools. Last time we talked about tools, the thing we noticed is that a tool, whether it's a little blue comb or something else, doesn't do anything by itself. It needs someone to pick it up and use it. And we talked about how we can ask God to use us as a part of his work here on earth. I have another lesson about tools, and we're going to think about how tools show us something about the church, about the people in the church, really. But I'm going to start by showing you four new tools, uh, tools that you haven't seen in the last video, and ask you, what is it, and what do we use it for? So here's the first one. What's this? Scissors, right. And what are they for? Cutting things. You're right. Okay, here's another tool. What's this? Ah, interesting. It's a flashlight, isn't it? And what's it for? It's for finding things. It's for giving us light when we need light to see. If we're searching for something or even if we're just out on a dark night and need to see where we're going. A flashlight is a very handy tool. What's this? This is a very large serving spoon. It gives you a good scoop of stuff. I suppose you could try eating from it, but it's really too big to go in your mouth, isn't it? But it's a tool, and it's used uh, in the kitchen. It's a very useful tool. It doesn't do the same job as a, as a pair of scissors or a flashlight, but it's a tool, and it's useful. Here's the last one. Do you know what this is? It's kind of hard to see. Let's see if I do this. Does that help? It has numbers on it. And it zips back in. And I can pull it out again. It's a measuring tape. And it's for measuring distances or sizes of things. I can measure how long something is or how tall or how wide it is. This is a measuring tape, a useful tool. Is any one of these tools more important than another one? You know what? They're all important. They all have their own job to do. They're all different. If they were all the same, think of a toolbox. If you uh, had a toolbox and everything in it was exactly the same, would it be a very useful toolbox? No. What if we only had one tool? What if the only tool we had was a pair of scissors? So every job we do that needs a tool, we need to use it. So we need to dig a hole, we're going to use our scissors to dig the hole. What if we have to hammer a nail? Well, I suppose we could try hammering with the end of the scissors. What about drawing a picture? Well, there's no ink or lead in it, but maybe you could scratch in the paper and draw a picture. What if we needed to eat a bowl of soup? Well, we could try eating it with scissors, but it's not going to be too easy to do, is it? It's not really what this tool is made for. Different tools are for different jobs, and each tool has a certain job to do. Now, here's a question. How is a church like a toolbox? How is a church like a toolbox? A church has all kinds of people in it and all kinds of ways God can use us. We're using a word picture about tools to think about the way we can all be part of God's work. In the Bible, there's another word picture about a person's body. It says a church is like a person's body. And in the um, part that I'm going to read to you, it talks about eyes and ears and noses and hands and feet as part of a human body. And how does that tell us something about parts of the church? Uh, thinking about, is any one of these parts of a human body more important than the others? So I'm going to read to you from the book of Corinthians, chapter 12, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, verses 14 to 20. 
The body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, would it stop being part of the body? And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, would it stop being part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would we hear? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. Isn't that an interesting word picture? Are any of those parts more important than the other? Any of your body parts? Are any of these tools more important than the others? Is any person in the church more important than the others? Should any of us say, because I'm not Pastor Sam, I'm not an important part of the body. I'm not an important part of the church. Or because I'm not a worship leader, I'm not important. I'm not a part of the church because I'm not a faith builder's teacher, because I'm not a youth uh, leader, I'm not an important part of the church. Should any of us say that? We ask uh, God to use us. We learned that in this lesson about the little blue comb. Oops, I'm dropping it. That it can't do anything by itself. So we ask God to use us. But when we ask him to use us, we can also ask him to show us uh, how he wants to use us, and he will answer our prayer. It doesn't matter if we're big or small. There's a place for each one of us. He's made us the way he has, uh, and we uh, accept that we, each of us, are a special and necessary and needed part of his church. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you that you made us the way we are and that we can be a part of your work. Please show each one of us how you can use us. In Jesus' name, amen. I have a number of announcements. Uh, one is that our uh, Vacation Bible School, um, the preparation, it's, it's on its way. So um, please continue to keep them in your prayers. Uh, tomorrow they have a uh, VBS porch packs preparation. Uh, so they get together between uh, 9 to noon, and they will uh, clean and disinfect, cut and wash, whatever that needs to go into the porch pickup pack. And uh, so do keep them in your prayers. Second is that today it's uh, communion, uh, communion Sunday. And so for those that who are at home, um, in any time that uh, you wanted to pause the video so that you can get your elements ready, uh, do so. But uh, for those who are here, um, if you haven't got your uh, elements, when you come in, you should be able to uh, see that at the table and make sure you uh, grab the uh, elements for our communion later on. And third, it's that uh, Happy Father's Day, Happy Grandfather's Day. Uh, today is Father's Day. Um, I also want you to be sensitive to those that who find today difficult as well. Uh, do remember that we do have a perfect Heavenly Father uh, who loves us, who's with us, uh, who gave himself to us. So in a moment, we're going to pray. We're going to prepare our hearts. Um, and as well, we're going to uh, pray for our offering. We wanted to express uh, thanks for the generous donors who give uh, to the Lord. And um, we have a website, uh, www.bemc.ca. And uh, you can uh, go and find that out. And in there, there's e-transfer for you to use. And there's a box in the back for you to use for those uh, who are here in person. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we wanted to give thanks. We wanted to give thanks for all you are to us. Lord, thank you so much for uh, not only creating us, but you created us. Uh, each has a part to play. There is none one, not one of us that are more important than the other. We need each and every one. 
And more importantly, we need you to help us to figure out our part, you to help us, to direct us, to guide us, to show us how do we fit in. God, each is important. And thank you so much for dying for all of us. And today, we as a body, we as, as a flock, we come to you and we say thank you so much for all that you have done, for all that you have put into our lives so that we could shine uh, because of you. Lord, we are so special to you. And thank you for laying eyes and creating us and caring for us. God, we also wanted to lift up uh, our online vacation Bible school, Kids Camp, um, that uh, we will be having soon, and all the preparation. And Lord, we pray that uh, as we continue to be faithful, Lord, we ask that you will continue to guide and, and lead and prepare uh, those that who are taking part of this and those who also are uh, helping this to happen. Lord, we, we lift over this ministry into your hands. We ask for your protection, for your guidance, and um, for your provision as well. Father, we also particularly wanted to lift up the kids and uh, the teachers downstairs. Uh, they're having their uh, kids' time, faith builders, Sunday school, and they're there to learn more about you. They're there to... Uh, grow to be more like you and Lord we pray for the teachers we ask that you will give them wisdom uh, you will help them uh, to express and pass on your word to the little ones and Lord we lift up the little ones too Lord they are so important and so Lord we pray that that root will grow deep and strong in you and that as they continue to grow they will become men and women of God to serve you to love you um, to have a strong relationship with you. Lord, we also wanted to come before you and ask you to forgive our sins. Lord, there's things that we have said, we have done, things that we should have said and didn't, things we should have done and didn't. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. Lord, this week in the past that uh, we have done and we have uh, say things that have hurt you, have hurt others. Lord, we pray that you forgive our sins that we could come clean before you and we could approach you uh, with pure hearts, clean hands. Lord, we also wanted to uh, lift up those who suffer in this world. There's so many in today's world that suffer, uh, whether it's through the pandemic, whether it's violence, uh, tragedy. Lord, we pray your encouraging hand will be upon them, your comfort. Your presence will be there to support them to through this time. And finally, Lord, we lift up our offering into your hands. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for calling us, for providing, and for allowing us to take part in your ministry, to spread your word to so many other people. And Lord, we pray that your word, your kingdom, will continue to go to places that you desire to go. Whether it's Breslau neighborhood or beyond, Lord, we give thanks. We pray for our offering. We ask that, Lord, you will bless those offerings that we receive. Thank you for hearing our prayers. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. For those who are able to stand, please stand. We continue to worship our Lord together. This morning dawns and evening fades You inspire songs of praise That rise from earth to touch your heart And glorify your name, your name it's a strong and mighty tower, your name. It's a shelter like no other, your name. Let the nation sing it louder, because nothing has the power to say but your name. Jesus. 
flood And I will be still Know you are Oceans rise and thunders roar. I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. Can we sing a church? I will be still, know you are God. And when the oceans rise and thunders roar. I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still, know you are God. I will be still, know you are God. I will be still, know you are God. Lord, we will be still and know that you are God, Lord. In the middle of the storm, Lord, you are there to calm the ocean, the raging seas in our hearts, Lord, around us, Lord. You are there to calm them down, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that we have the same feeling that you have, Lord, that we are one with you, Lord, that we understand what you want from and for all of us, Lord. We pray, Lord, that, um, that your peace rests in our hearts, Lord, and that we can also share that peace with others, Lord. We pray that your wisdom comes to us, Lord, and that we can share that wisdom with other lords. We pray that our, your forgiveness and love you know, rests in our hearts, too, and we can share them with the world, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. This morning, we're so thankful to have John. John, come on up and uh, share, with, share the word with us and bless us with the word. Good morning. It's a little technical difficulties getting through the, the mask and the glasses and uh, the mic. <laughs> All part of the fun. Okay, let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this time. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord. I just pray that the words that you have prepared have me prepared, that uh, they would be a gift, Lord, that people would hear you and that we would be changed by knowing that you are a living active in all our lives and that uh, we can grow and know you more each moment of each day. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So there we are. So he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Today we'll dig into these two verses. Bible scholars do, do not agree who wrote this psalm as there is no author. But they look back at the previous psalm and Moses is the author, and they look at how it was written and the rhyme, the rhythm of the, of the psalm that they, they think it was Moses, but there is no author. Others uh, think it was King David, and that 
Coincidentally enough, it was written during a time of pestilence or a pandemic when Israel was being punished for David's sin for numbering the people, as in 2 Samuel chapter 24 records. But what is important to note, regardless of what the author, was that even though Moses preceded David by 400 years, both desired God's care, no matter the circumstances of their time. Both these men understood that God cared for his people. Do we fully appreciate God's sovereign and absolute care? What stories from your past could you tell others who don't know God of his care? Maybe it's something from your childhood, maybe something from your, um, your adult years, maybe it's something from COVID. Today we'll examine his care through four words of protection and one of the complete dependence. Shelter. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. A shelter for us is some kind of structure, a place that keeps us dry, a place to hide from the sun or the snow. But we can't always be in a shelter. We must leave it for work, to do ministry, to be with others, even to play. But we, can we take God's shelter with us wherever we go? The simple answer is yes, but how? Many of us spend a focused time with God every day. We pray, we read our Bibles, we meditate on verses or a passage, we answer Bible study questions. There are many ways to spend time with God. It's quite easy to be in the shelter of the Most High during what some of us call our, our quiet time. Do you have a special time each day with God? If you have a full-time job, you may find it difficult to read more than one or two chapters a day and maybe answer the Bible study questions. I would encourage you, no matter the time you can commit each day, do it. Like a compass, God's word will keep you on the right path when the worldly pursuits pull us off course. Once we leave that physical shelter and enter the world, do we leave God's shelter behind? Do we make our way in the world with all its worldly distractions on our own strength and determination? How do we keep God in front of us throughout the day? If you have ways that work for you, I, I encourage you to share that with those you know who are struggling in this area. Recently, I adopted some new routines, and one is to be in the uh, desire to be in conversation with God as much as possible. As 1 Thessalonians 5.17 tells us, Pray without ceasing. And another is spending more time meditating on, on my memory verses. Am I perfect in these practices? N not even close. But I know they are good for me and it draws me back when I am off course. Shadow. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. As we continue this idea of being in the shelter of God's presence, verse 1 also communicates that it will cause us to stay close to God. In the 23rd Psalm, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. How many of you want to walk through this, this valley? Not many of us, I expect. How many of us will walk through this or similar valleys in our life? All of us will, I expect. Is evil present there? Yes, definitely. But as King David assures us, we are not to fear evil because God is with us as we pass through these seasons of life. So both types of shadows are okay because God is there with us. In Psalm 91, God is keeping us from the world, that is, Satan's domain. In the past, it was a normal routine for many people to read a newspaper. For some, it continues to be a practice, but for many of us, we look at uh, television or internet. For us as Christians, is it necessary for us to know all the details of this world? Do we need the news updates on our phone? Do we need to watch the 
television news every night? Does our professional sports team keep us in tune with what's happening and out of tune with God? Why do we desire to be connected with the world to the degree we do? For some, it's, a fo it's fodder for light conversation. But maybe we should be taking more risk to have deeper conversations with people, especially our brothers and sisters in Christ. Refuge. I will say of the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. The dictionary provides this definition of refuge, a place of being safe or shielded from pursuit, danger, or trouble. Does this sanctuary provide a refuge for you or does your home? If you're a parent of young children, maybe it's the bedroom or the bathroom that provides with your refuge for the simple fact that there's a lock on the door. Maybe it's your favorite chair or a place in the house. And if you remember back when Pastor Sam did his messages from his van, that was definitely his refuge. Regardless, we all appreciate places of refuge. As a Christian, where is your refuge? It can begin in a place, but is that enough? If not where, then what is your refuge? Will a place or an activity always satisfy as a refuge? What is the one place you can always go to find a haven? I expect you already know the answer. It is in the presence of Jesus. So really, not a place, but a person. Brother Lawrence, a 17th century monk in Europe, desired to always be in God's presence. He sought to be in constant conversation with his Savior. I'd highly recommend his book, The Practice of the Presence of God, this 25-page book can be found on the internet as a PDF. It intimately tells Brother Lawrence's story through conversation and letters. To me, it was like having a conversation with a learned friend or mentor. Someone who no longer chased worldly pursuits, but was hoping to pass on what he had reaped through to the next generation. I think Psalm 46 one, two, provides us with the correct perspective. God is our refuge and a strength and a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea. What about the owner of this house? Do you think they are Christians? Here, the erosion of the earth could literally give way or an earthquake move the mountains beyond, behind them into the sea. Although it is unlikely that non-Christians we know will ever be in this kind of situation, but, but if they are, what is their refuge? What is their strength? How do they prepare for the scary moments of life? What can you do for, that, for the hurting person who doesn't know Jesus? Could be a phone call. We found those to be very important during this pandemic. Hopefully soon, a coffee together, just to listen. Maybe it'll be a time to talk about your faith, and maybe not. St. Francis of Assisi, commonly given credit for this quote, preach the gospel at all times. When necessary, use words. In other words, pray. God, First, give me the right attitude, then the actions and words in order to remove the darkness and replace it with light. In your day-to-day -day yearn yearnings, disappointments, fears, and other varied emotions, is God your refuge from pursuit, danger, or trouble? I pray he is. I will say of the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Do you know the difference between a fort and a fortress? Along the coast of Lake Ontario from Niagara Falls to Kingston, roughly, there are several 1812 forts. And as you know, a fort is a position of strength. 
Inside, there are soldiers and their commanders and those that still support the military post. On the other hand, a fortress is actually a village surrounded by a wall, as in a fort, but everything and everything is there and they can be independent for a long period of time. The fields, the inside may have gardens and, and places to uh, house animals for food and everything. So they're, they're self-contained for quite a long time. Our family has visited several of the forts in Ontario, but when the kids were quite young, we, we uh, had a special time visiting the Fortress of Louisbourg, a 16th century fortress in, on Cape Breton Island. Highly recommend it, great tour spot. But let's consider how a military fortress relates to our life as a Christian. Inside the fortress of a righteous life, God, provi God provides the wall of sanctification from Satan's world. Within the fortress, God supplies all our needs. Some may contend that the Holy Spirit is our fortress. And that imagery is accurate, I think, by the, uh, supported by this verse. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous man runs into it and is safe. Like a fortress, we are not immune to attacks. The enemy wants to take us over. Satan uses all kinds of tactics to get to us. Sometimes Satan appears to use very positive approach. He wants to give us a blessing, offering us something beyond the wall. Sometimes Satan attempts to attack our value that we are on the wrong side and fighting for the wrong things. Many times, like during a pandemic, Satan uses fear to deceive us that God is not in control. You hopefully understand that we, are, we must do our part in order for us to be protected by God's fort or spirit. We have to know our identity and be good soldiers, as this passage reminds us. The Holy Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. What does it take to be a good soldier? First, we have to make a decision to be in God's army. We have to believe that God loves each of us and wants us to spend eternity with him. We need to acknowledge that we sin. We must repent, turning in the opposite direction from all our sinfulness. We need to read and study God's word we must seek guidance from God through prayer, and we need to be part of a Bible-believing community, that is, brothers and sisters in Christ who know and follow God's word. If you do these steps, will you be a perfect soldier? No. God isn't interested in perfection. He wants a heart change, allowing the Holy Spirit to live in and through us. I will say to the Lord, my God, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For me, this is my biggest challenge, to trust God in all things. COVID-19 has magnified that, this for me. Am I 100% confident that God has a plan for my life? That I can trust him to carry out that plan? Sadly, no. That's why I try to convert my plans into his plans. Maybe you do that too. The one important thing I have learned from this approach is that my plans never satisfy. One of the biggest hopes is that someday in everything I do, I will not move forward without God. What about you? Do you trust God 100% of the time that he will carry out his plan for you? Or do you hedge your bets with plan B? As you may know, after Jill and I moved back from the Czech Republic in June of 2018, we hope to return each fall for two or three months. We very much enjoyed the blessing of going in the fall of 2019. There were so many God moments. 
We had great conversation and opportunities to move our ministry forward, which was to connect few, a few children's homes, essentially state-run orphanages, with a local church. We saw God working in so many ways we couldn't wait for the fall of 2020. But then COVID hit the world. The Czech Republic, their initial policy, lock it down. They locked the country out. Every, nobody could come in. Nobody could leave. I think they had practice with that with communism, but not sure. So they had very low infection rates, very few deaths. The country's leaders were so happy. They had a day of celebration on Charles Bridge in Prague. They fed thousands of people. This was July 2020. I was ready to book the tickets. But then it happened. The celebration was a huge mistake. Their infection rate went from 60th or 70th in the world to somewhere in the teens. At one point, they had the highest rate of death in the world. In Canada, I know of people who had COVID. In Czech Republic, almost everyone we know has been infected. My hopes were dashed. So did God change his plan? No, it wasn't his plan. It's my plan. Now as the fall of 2021 approaches, will we return to the Czech Republic? I will wait. I will need to wait and see what God shows Jill and me as I daily put, my, put into practice Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. This has not been easy for me to do, as I say, but it is my desire at the start of each day. At the end of the day, I sit back and I review. How did I do in this area? From that, I've learned that repentance is certainly a bigger part of my life than it was before. Do you ever plan your day? You've just woken up and you say to yourself, what will I do today? Or is your day planned for you? You get the kids up, breakfast, school, work, work for you, evening, bed. No planning necessary. As a teacher, I enjoyed planning my day. I really did. I, I, I was an over-the-top planner. Planned everything. Uh, the problem was, when I retired, there was not that much to plan. So it was a struggle for me to maintain that same level of activity. So it was, uh, so I did not trust God in that area. So even though I memorized this verse a long time ago, I still struggled. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Do you know that this, this verse, this prophecy was written at the beginning of Israel's uh, captivity in Babylon. It was 70 years before they were free. All through that time, God continued his plan. He prospered the Israelites. God gave them hope, and the people knew God had a future for them. I'm sure there were times of hopelessness, but they had an anchor in God that held them to this prophecy. Although I still struggle with trusting God for all my plans, he has shown me that this verse is true for all of us who believe. That this is the day the Lord has made. I'll rejoice and be glad in it. It does not say, uh, this is the week. It doesn't say, this is the month. This is the year. It says, this is the day. God knows I struggle with trust. Maybe you do too. But I can trust him for this day. And at the end of the day, I can thank God for this day. Then when I wake up tomorrow, I can trust God for the new day. The first four words we examined today had to do with protection, that only God can provide. An article in the April 2020 on the internet written by Philip Jenkins relates this interesting story. Quote, I found a story circulating that tells of American brigade commander in the World War I who gave a little card with Psalm 91 on it to, to his men 
who were in the brigade of the same number, 91st Brigade. They agreed to recite this daily. The story goes that after they started praying this prayer, they were involved in three of the fiercest battles of the First World War and had no, suffered no casualties, despite other brigades suffering 90% casualty rate." End quote. From the World War I and other conflicts, namely the Vietnam War and uh, the war in Iraq, this psalm has become known as the Soldier's Psalm. We can trust the world to provide for our needs, or we can trust God. One has come to steal and to kill and destroy, and the other to give an abundant life. We get to choose each day who we'll put our trust in. The greatest protection we are blessed with as Christians is Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection from the grave. The good news provided each of us a clear provides us a clear road to eternity. As the song by Brandon Heath exclaims, I am following Jesus now, and he knows the way. I made up my mind, I leave it behind. No turning back, no turning back. Is that what you yearn for each day? To trust God will provide you and your family shelter from the world? That your family uh, will abide in his shadow and that his refuge is your mighty fortress. God provides all we need. Let's continue to follow him and we'll be amazed where he will take us. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this time together. I just pray, Lord, that the words would come into people's hearts and that they would hear you and not hear my words, but be affected by the way you want them to, to be changed, Lord. Thank you for this time. Amen. Thank you, John, for the word. Thank you, John, for the word. I trust that you are all blessed by his word, protection, and trust. The Lord knows that uh, what we're going through, even that storm, uh, song we, we sang, what kind of storm are we going through that need the Lord's protection? It's a storm of the pandemic, of health, of families, uh, rivalries, sin. What kind of storm are we going through? And, and we can all come to the Lord for his protection and, and for uh, to trust Him. We're going to transition to communion. So um, when you come in, you will receive uh, one of that. Uh, if you have not, uh, you can raise your hand. Um, our server will bring that to you. And uh, I would encourage you to um, open it because this is not that easy to open. And for those who are at home, uh, make sure that you have your elements ready. And speaking about uh, the Lord, it's his, as John uh, recalled that, we can come to him for protection because he has given his life for us. And he has established the communion for us to remember. I don't know about you, like, I think, a lot of times these days, um, my memory is not so good. And it's good to have the reminder that for the Lord, what the Lord has done for us, and as well, that we can trust in Him. So we're going to let the song to lead us. Oops. And before that, uh, let me pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks. We give thanks for this time. We give thanks for your word. We give thanks for Jesus Christ. Lord, as we come into your presence, as we uh, come to your table, uh, in a moment to receive the bread and the cup, help us to remember what you have done for us. Help us to experience your love and help us in turn 
to give our trust a hundred percent to you. Even the times that we don't understand, but Lord, you want our trust, and that's good for for us and for your kingdom. And so, Lord, um, with grateful hearts, with thankful hearts, we're entering to the communion table. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. On the night you were betrayed, you took the bread. After giving things, you broke it and said, this is my body broken for you and as you eat it remember me this is my body broken for you and as you eat it remember Let's take the bread together. On the night you were betrayed, you held the cup. After giving thanks, you lifted it up. This is my blood poured out for you. And as you drink it, remember me. This is my blood poured out for you. And as you drink it, remember me. With grateful hearts, let's receive the cup together. So we thank you for the wine and for the bread. We see the life you gave and the blood you shed. And we remember your wondrous love. You gave your body, you shed your and we remember your wondrous love you gave your body you shed your blood for those who are able to stand let's stand continue our worship together I have decided I called out his name I'm following Jesus now and He knows the way I've made up my mind I'd leave it behind No turning back No turning back I'm moving on, not looking back I'm giving Him all that I am No turning back, no turning back Though I may wonder I am not lost So many distractions by I look to the cross I've made up my mind I laid it behind No turning back No turning back I'm moving on Not looking back I'm giving Him All that I have No turning back No turning back you wanna come with me? He loves.
loves you the same Oh, won't you come with me Just call out his name I have decided To follow Jesus Oh, I have decided I'm following Jesus, following Jesus, no turning back, no turning back, I'm moving on, not looking back, I'm giving Him all that I am, no turning back, no turning back, no turning back, no turning back. Thank you for joining us this morning and thank you for those at home joining us. Let's receive the Lord's blessings. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn towards you and give you peace. Amen. Have a wonderful week.